understand what is the latest situation in Azerbaijan uh, right now. I believe the guest I believe the guest is ready. He is live with us right now. Ahmed Shahidov is joining us uh, from Azerbaijan. Uh, I'm really sorry, uh, Ahmed. Uh, I mean, our condolences to you and your country. Please help us understand how did this attack take place and what are the latest developments? Yes, uh, a couple of hours ago, Armenian armed forces uh, once again attacked uh, the second largest city, Genja, and Armenian armed forces continue firing on the uh, civilians in Azerbaijan. And now uh, Genja and uh, Mingachevir cities uh, um, of uh, Azerbaijan came under missile attacks again today and uh, hiding uh, itself behind the uh, humanitarian uh, tools armed forces of Armenia continue its uh, practice of terror uh, and war crimes. And hypocritical calls for a humanitarian ceasefire uh, must address these war crimes by Armenia. And according to uh, preliminary reports, more than uh, 20 houses were destroyed uh, today uh, using uh, the ceasefire new missile uh, systems were um, uh, brought to Armenia these days, and they immediately began to brutally attack uh, the civilian uh, population of Azerbaijan cities, uh, uh, Genja and Mingachevir. And starting uh, this morning, Armenian uh, armed forces continue firing on the uh, another region of Azerbaijan, Tatar region, and grossly violating the uh, humanitarian ceasefire. So on October 16, uh, today, uh, I mean yesterday, the enemy fired about uh, 400 shells into the uh, region. As a result, uh, over 10 civilian houses were damaged. And from September uh, 27 to October uh, 16, uh, uh, to, uh, yesterday, Armenian armed forces fired a total of 12,500 shells into the region. And as a result of these, uh, 14 people were killed and 52 wounded. In uh, aggregate, uh, 116 uh, civil houses and 28 uh, uh, buildings, uh, civilian buildings were completely destroyed. Uh, also, more than uh, 600 houses, uh, 57. Ahmed, Ahmed, if I may, if I may interject here, can you please help uh, remind our audience once again what is the total number of casualties that have been caused by this latest Armenian attack on the Azerbaijani city of Ganja? Uh, you know, uh, I, I don't have enough uh, statistics about these casualties, but uh, uh, about uh, 42 uh, civilians were killed and uh, more than uh, 200 people wounded, and uh, more than uh, 600 houses, 57 apartments, buildings, and another uh, uh, civilian settlements were destroyed. And today, now, in a couple hours ago, again, they attacked it with missile uh, ro rockets to Ganja city, and they choose uh, especially uh, night hours when the people are going to sleep, so to have more casualties, more people uh, Exactly, and this, and is, this, is, this is exactly how it seems like right now. Now, Ahmed, uh, I'm sure you must have followed the previous attacks. Uh, of course, whatever we are doing right now is mere speculation. We do not know how many buildings have been damaged, how many people have been killed. But how different do you think this attack is from from the one that took place uh, earlier this week? Uh, you know, Armenia uh, defeat, uh, were defeated, uh, you know, had lost uh, a lot of uh, territories, a lot of villages last uh, weeks, and uh, to how to, to keep balance and uh, how to, say, to um, uh, create, to make chaos inside the uh, population of Azerbaijan, they tried to uh, target especially civilian uh, cities and villages. And by, by this uh, step, they uh, tried to provoke Azerbaijan at the same time. They uh, wish Azerbaijan to uh, fire on these uh, points, fire points in, uh, uh, in the territory of Republic of Armenia. By this way, they tried to provoke Azerbaijan and uh, Armenia, uh, Armenian authorities uh, uh, and Ahmed, if, if I may interject here once again, I was watching President Ilham Aliyev's interview, uh, I believe from today or yesterday. Even though Armenia has attacked 
Azerbaijani civilian settlements over the past few weeks. He still said that Azerbaijan is not going to engage in attacking any Armenian civilians. And this is what we have seen uh, uh, happening as well. The Azerbaijani military operation is only focused on the area of Nagorno-Karabakh, which is under Armenian occupation, isn't it? Azerbaijan armed forces operates uh, only in a uh, battleground in Nagorno-Karabakh and other surrounded uh, region occupied by uh, Armenia, the regions of Azerbaijan. Uh, and we uh, don't uh, uh, target any civilian settlements in uh, even these territories. We target only fire points of uh, Armenian armed forces where from they uh, fire our uh, uh, civilians, civilian village, civilian settlement, and we don't uh, target any uh, point in the, the, in the territory of the Republic of Armenia. And all these operations, military operations, are going on in the uh, territory of uh, Nagorno-Karabakh and as a surrounded uh, village, uh, surrounded cities occupied by Armenia. So uh, I think. Uh, last uh, very successful uh, operations, military operations of Azerbaijan uh, are to make uh, chaos inside the Armenian authorities and uh, using the ceasefire period, uh, Armenian uh, government uh, brought a lot of missile uh, rockets and unfortunately they uh, use these rockets against the civilian uh, people, civilian uh, population of Azerbaijan, and it again uh, shows them, I'll say, a uh, terrorist uh, nature of the Armenian government, uh, Armenian armed forces. They, they used this experience in the uh, 90s during the first uh, Karabakh war, uh, uh, during the uh, Khojala genocide, during the another uh, brutality they did in uh, Nagorno-Karabakh, and uh, today they uh, try to repeat and once again show that uh, they are the terrorist uh, government. Now, Ahmed, uh, moving forward, uh, we did see a tweet coming from the Azerbaijani president, Ilham Aliyev, earlier today, in which he specifically mentioned that if Armenia keeps on engaging in attacking Azerbaijani civilians, there will be a response from the Azerbaijani side. What could be that response? You know, uh, it's uh, international recognized right of Azerbaijan, not only Azerbaijan, all uh, countries in the world that uh, we should, uh, how to say, neutralize the uh, fire point where the Armenian armed forces uh, target our civilians. Uh, no matter it, it locates in Nagorno-Karabakh, no matter in an another region, uh, Armen Azerbaijan armed forces should neutralize and destroy these fire points uh, of uh, these Armenian armed forces. I think uh, all these or, or recent uh, attacks on civilian population of Azerbaijan uh, will change the uh, nature of this war. Uh, uh, and Azerbaijan has, uh, keeps the right to, uh, how to say, to neutralize and uh, attack all these fire points where, the, where from the Armenian uh, armed forces use uh, to target the civilian. But anyway, Azerbaijan army uh, continue this uh, large-scale uh, uh, military operations and uh, liberate the new uh, areas, new villages, and uh, new points uh, that uh, are under occupation of Armenia. And everything will uh, we will see in uh, today or tomorrow what will happen. But I think uh, Azerbaijan armed forces. Uh, should continue these military operations, should destroy the, uh, the fire point. This, Do you think, uh, Ahmed, this is a grave escalation, a dramatic escalation of tension? Uh, especially, do you think tensions are dramatically escalated now that Armenia has yet again attacked Azerbaijani civilians? Yes, because Armenia uh, uh, does his best to enlarge this uh, military uh, operation and uh, keep the tension in the region. In spite of the uh, ceasefire agreement uh, uh, reached in Moscow, they continue uh, to violate the ceasefire, they violate the, uh, even the rule of war, even Geneva Convention by targeting the civilians, uh, civilian uh, population of Azerbaijan. But uh, the tension uh, will uh, be remained, and uh, the escalation, I think, will uh, remain in the region. But uh, what will the 
uh, response of Azerbaijan army, we, we, we uh, will see tomorrow after tomorrow. But I think Azerbaijan army uh, have to continue this uh, military operation, anti-terror operation, because uh, this is the uh, terrorist uh, attacks. This is the how to say, against the uh, rule of war against humanity to attack the civilians, especially during the night hours. So it's uh, against the all international uh, norms and principles. Okay, now, Ahmed, my last question to you here. The eyes of the world right now are on the latest escalation of tensions between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Now, what do you think it would take for tensions to de-escalate between these two countries? What is the solution to this conflict? You know, the solution is uh, only one. It's the international community, the OEC means group, uh, co-chairs countries, the, uh, the international uh, UN uh, member states, the main uh, powers in the world should uh, call Armenia to uh, respect the ceasefire. This is the first. The when, then uh, we uh, the respect the uh, four resolutions of UN Security Council and uh, the withdraw its troops from occupied territories. After that, we can uh, start the new negotiation uh, to solve this problem uh, by peaceful means. And also, Azerbaijan's Azerbaijan side has uh, some uh, preconditions and demands from international community about the peaceful negotiation. We should have uh, Turkey. Uh, on the table, so to 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 in in these negotiations, because uh, recent statements of uh, French uh, President Emmanuel Macron and yesterday uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, of uh, United States uh, Pompeo uh, once again showed that uh, the uh, co-chairs of OEC Minsk Group, I mean, uh, especially U.S. and France, they uh, they are not uh, uh, negotiating this. Uh, process, uh, they, uh, they, uh, just uh, defending the uh, Armenian side. So it's against the uh, negotiation process, against the principles, against the principles of OEC Minsk Group co-chairmanship. So I think uh, we, we should have Turkey uh, in this uh, negotiation process. After that, we can uh, start uh, this uh, peaceful uh, solution of this conflict. But in the background. Uh, all of this negotiation, uh, we should have the principle of the total integrity of Azerbaijan. This is the uh, basic principle of uh, UN conventions and all international norms and principles. So we can, uh, today only uh, Armenia, uh, all the international calls uh, should address to Armenian side to, uh, first of all, the uh, respect the ceasefire agreement and then withdraw its troops from these occupied territories. Now, then Ahmed, can... Ahmed, if I may interject here, just to remind our audience uh, that uh, President Erdogan's spokesperson, Ibrahim Cullen, has just tweeted about this latest Armenian attack. And in the tweet, he says, Armenia continues to commit war crimes even under a declared ceasefire, as in Kojeli, it kills women, children, the elderly and civilians indiscriminately. Armenia will pay for these unlawful acts and murders. Turkey stands with Azerbaijan to the very end. Let me just uh, repeat it once again. This tweet is coming from President Erdogan's spokesperson, Ibrahim Kalin. He says, Armenia continues to commit war crimes even under a declared ceasefire, as in Kojeli, it kills women, children, the elderly and civilians indiscriminately. Armenia will pay for these unlawful acts and murders. Turkey stands with Azerbaijan to the very end. Uh, Ahmed, are you still with us? Yes. Uh, so what do you make thanks. up of uh, this stance taken by Turkey? You know, uh, all statements from Turkey are uh, in the framework of international law. Uh, Turkey is our brother country, but also Turkey is, stands for uh, uh, commitment of international uh, requirements of international law. And as Mr. Cullen uh, remember, mentioned the Kojala genocide, I remember I, I, I was uh, 10 years old uh, in 1992, uh, from uh, 25 to 26 of February, in one night, Armenian armed forces uh, entered to Kojali city of Azerbaijan and uh, killed 
617 innocent people, civilian people, including uh, children, women, elders, and uh, we, we call it uh, as a Kojala genocide because uh, they are innocent people, they are civilians, and the same uh, uh, steps taken by Armenia today uh, by firing on uh, civilian settlements, civilian house, uh, by a firing of Genja and Mingachevir city, because these cities are far from Nagorno-Karabakh, are uh, about uh, 70, 80 kilometers far from this uh, battleground, from the front line. So the same uh, nature, the same uh, practice, that uh, Armenia shows uh, in, in in this uh, war. So I think um, all international uh, community, all international organizations and countries should um, call Armenia uh, as uh, aggressor and uh, to call them to respect their, first of all, the ceasefire agreement and withdraw its troops. And thanks Turkey that the stands for uh, international law and international uh, agreements, international statements, and support Azerbaijan in its uh, right uh, position. Now, Ahmed, uh, uh, I understand we are taking a lot of your time, but uh, we have received another tweet uh, from Hikmet Hajiev, who is the advisor yes. to the Azerbaijani uh, president, Mr. Ilham Aliyev. Now, he tweeted, uh, Hikmet Hajiyev, uh, just recently that 35 civilians have been wounded and five civilians killed as a result of Armenia's missile attacks on Ganja. Two kids are among the dead. Emergency works are still going on. Armenia's terror and war crimes continue. I mean, it's just tragic to see that two children are also among the ones who have been it's killed by Armenia. Ahmed, what are your thoughts? Crime. It's completely war crime because uh, it's against the all uh, rules of war. It's uh, against, uh, but after uh, continuous uh, uh, defeats of Armenian armed forces in battleground, uh, they try to provoke Azerbaijan by targeting uh, civilian civil uh, settlements. But I, uh, I think Azerbaijan will respond to these uh, provocations in battleground, and today or tomorrow we will. Uh, get news about the liberation, new villages, new uh, regions from Armenian occupation. And I think this is the, uh, as uh, uh, Nikol Pashinyan, uh, uh, authorities, Nikol Pashinyan government uh, is uh, in chaos and they, they don't know what they do. Uh, and that's why. I mean, it's just tragic to see that two children are also among the ones who have been it's, killed by Armenia. Ahmed, what are your thoughts? Crime. Armenian people, Armenian nation, uh, think very uh, clearly and to demand uh, Nikol Pashinyan or go from uh, go out from the. Um, Ahmed, uh, stay with us. Stay with us. I, I, we have the map. We. Ha we have the map of uh, Ganja and Azerbaijan and Armenia on the screens right now. So this latest attack uh, took place in the Azerbaijani city of Ganja, which is located pretty close to the border between the two countries. But this city is not in the conflict zone. This is key to highlight here. The city of Ganja is not in the conflict zone. So it's quite clear that Armenia has now engaged in attacking civilians living in Azerbaijani cities. Ganja is the second largest city of Azerbaijan and this is not the first time Armenia has attacked civilians in the city of Ganja. Perhaps this is the third or fourth time. Uh, Ahmed, help us understand more about the city of Ganja. What is the significance of this city and why do you think this city has become the target of Armenian missiles? Uh, you know, Ganja is the largest, uh, second largest city of Azerbaijan with a population of, of 500,000 people. And it's a very strategic, uh, very cultural, historical uh, city of Azerbaijan. Also, uh, it's far from the Nagorno-Karabakh and this uh, front line, but it has very strategic uh, uh, points uh, because uh, all uh, strategic uh, pipelines as you remember, in uh, July of this year, Armenian armed forces uh, attacked uh, Tawuz region, uh, and this provocation uh, was 
uh, repeated in uh, September 12 as well. And Tavos, uh, Ganja were very close to each other. And all these uh, pipelines, international pipelines, projects, Baku Tbilisi Jehan, Baku Tbilisi Kars, Baku Tbilisi Akhal Kalaki, uh, TANAP, and other international projects are uh, going across these cities, Ganja and Tavos. And uh, by attacking, firing on Tavos and Ganja uh, regions, first of all, Armenia wish to destroy, uh, try to destroy these international uh, pipelines, international uh, projects. Uh, and by this way, how to say to uh, uh, defeat Azerbaijan's economy, uh, how to say, uh, and to uh, separate uh, Azerbaijan from uh, uh, strategically uh, from Arme uh, from uh, Europe, and also uh, they try to keep, uh, open new uh, battlefield, new uh, front line in, on the uh, state border between Armenia and Azerbaijan. You know, Nagorno-Karabakh is the another conflict, and they try to open new uh, front line uh, across the uh, state border, uh, and by this way to involve third countries, especially Russia, and saying that Azerbaijan attacks uh, Armenian uh, border, Armenian territory, please help us, Russia and other members of uh, this organization that Armenia is a member. But Azerbaijan, in response to these provocations in July of this year, in September 12, Azerbaijan uh, operates only in Nagorno-Karabakh in, 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 and uh, other surrounded uh, regions on the front line. We just uh, destroyed the uh, fire points where uh, Armenia's armed forces attack to Azerbaijan from. And, but the main uh, military operations, uh, counter-offensive operations, are uh, taking place in Nagorno-Karabakh. Uh, so uh, I think Armenian armed forces just uh, try to provoke uh, Azerbaijan and make any chaos, uh, make any, uh, how to say, uh, very difficult uh, situation uh, among the uh, civil population of Azerbaijan. But uh, the Ganja is a very strong city. Uh, Ganja population is uh, very uh, brave uh, people and they stay at their homes right now and they are ready to uh, defend their cities. Uh, they're very beautiful, historical and... Uh, Ahmed, I have another city. important question here. Like you mentioned, the people of Ganja are brave people. In fact, uh, uh, the correspondent of our sister channel, Ahabar, is present on the ground, on the site of this latest Armenian attack. And I saw him speaking uh, to one of uh, the persons uh, whose houses uh, have been affected in this latest Armenian attack. And during that interview, that person said, uh, we are not afraid and we have faith in God. So what is the general opinion, public opinion coming out from Azerbaijan after this latest Armenian aggression and Armenian missile attacks, which are, let me mention it once again, which are targeting innocent children? You know, um, since uh, 20, uh, September 27, when Armenia uh, attacked uh, Tartar, Tawuz, and other uh, regions uh, on state border and on front line, the, uh, the main goal of Azerbaijani people, Azerbaijani uh, nations, Azerbaijani youth is to again, finally again uh, start the war. We call it Second uh, Karabakh War because we had the one, uh, first uh, Karabakh War in the 90s. And all uh, people in Azerbaijan wish finally to start the Second uh, Karabakh War and liberate our land. And we uh, used to demand this from uh, Azerbaijani government, Azerbaijan state, uh, from Azerbaijan president. And now Azerbaijan uh, started this, uh, how to say, uh, very uh, important and very uh, how to say, uh, important war and operations, military operations, and uh, are liberating uh, its lands from Armenian occupations. And almost every day, almost every day, one, two, or three villages are liberated from Armenians. And we, uh, the Azerbaijan flag is uh, flying in these uh, villages, in these regions. So, but these provocations, uh, the firings of uh, civil settlements, uh, civilians, uh, we don't afraid it. We don't afraid it. 
is just um, uh, last provocations of uh, Armenian side because uh, they they uh, have uh, no uh, power, no soldiers to fight against Azerbaijan in battleground, and that's why they, they just use these missile rockets uh, to uh, fire the civilian civilian settlement civilian uh, cities. Right. Uh, are uh, just uh, uh, they want Azerbaijani people to be afraid, and maybe Azerbaijan will stop the war, military operations, and uh, they will gain more time and keep the status quo. As President Ilham Aliyev de- said, that there is no status quo already, there is no front line, uh, and we all destroyed this. Ahmed, now another we- key question here is the role key stakeholders are going to play in de escalating the situation. Of course, uh, Russia and Armenia are traditional allies. Although Russia is not militarily supporting Armenia uh, uh, in attacking Azerbaijani civilians, at least this is what we are hearing uh, from the Russian side. We heard a statement from Vladimir Putin in which he clearly mentioned that uh, the reason why Russia is not uh, directly involved in this conflict is because the conflict is taking place on Azerbaijani territory. This is again an acknowledgement by Russia that Nagorno-Karabakh is part of Azerbaijan. But apart from that, uh, how do you think the key stakeholders are going to uh, play a role here? What do you think we should expect from countries such as Russia? And uh, what do you think we should expect from countries such as the United States at this point? Because the U.S. has great influence all over the world. Yes, you know, uh, about the uh, regional, uh, the roles of regional powers, I mean, Russia and Iran. Uh, sure, officially, uh, Russia uh, declared that uh, the uh, war is going on uh, not in Armenian territory, so Russia uh, cannot be involved in these uh, clashes. But indirectly, Russia uh, gives as a gift, as a gift, uh, the weapons and missile rockets, and even we have some. Uh, an official information that during these uh, uh, meetings for a ceasefire agreement in Moscow, after uh, leaving this meeting, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs of Armenia uh, took about uh, received about uh, 300 missile rockets with his with his uh, plane. So, Ahmed, to this Armenia. brings me to another interesting question here: Can Russia be trusted? as an honest broker between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Our Azerbaijan yes. and Russia also enjoy a good relationship, but uh, can Azerbaijan really trust Russia when it comes to resolving uh, the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh? You know, uh, it's uh, politics. For some ones, for some countries, it's politics, but it's uh, very... Uh, it's war, and for us, and we we uh, are liberating and defending our motherland. And uh, you know, Russia uh, has some experience in 90s uh, to help Armenia, and somehow the uh, Soviet troops, former Soviet troops, uh, helped to to commit this Kojala genocide in uh, 1992. So we have uh, some uh, experience to have Russia. Uh, involved uh, in this conflict and helping Armenia uh, to fight against Azerbaijan. But nowadays, the Russia uh, officially uh, are neutral and keeps uh, the balance between the uh, parties, between the sides. But uh, uh, we have some unofficial uh, information that every day Armenian uh, uh, Armenian airlines, civil airlines, uh, has transports. Uh, weapons, missile rockets from Rostov na Don airport to Yerevan airport. Uh, we haven't any uh, official information, uh, official evidence about it, but uh, we have some uh, unofficial uh, sources that they accept this uh, transportation of uh, missile rockets every day, daily transportation of missile rockets and uh, uh, very different kind of weapons from Russia to Armenia. And the uh, recent attacks uh, of uh, Armenian side to a civilian in Azerbaijan once again showed that after uh, the ceasefire agreement reached in Moscow, Armenia has uh, uh, got uh, some weapons. That's why they use these missile rockets against the uh, civilians. And we have some unofficial information that Armenia receives military support uh, and weapons as gift 
from France uh, these last weeks. And but what about the role of Russia? Sure, uh, the uh, K- Russia uh, plays very uh, key role in this uh, conflict. And if uh, uh, if to be honest, if Russia wants to solve this uh, problem, they can uh, push uh, Vladimir Putin can push Armenia to respect uh, this ceasefire, to respect the uh, uh, total integrity of Azerbaijan, and uh, we can uh, start new format of this. Uh, negotiations, but you know uh, it, everything uh, depends uh, uh, on uh, how the sides as well. You know, R- Russia has very uh, important role in this conflict. Also, U.S. Uh, have a very significant role as well. But unfortunately, uh, the recent statements of uh, U.S. officials uh, they uh, have the same attitude towards the uh, conflicting sides. They never uh, call Armenia as aggressor, and they uh, never uh, openly uh, accepted the territorial integrity of Azerbaijan. But you know, uh, during the international uh, conferences, during the uh, OSD, UN, other uh, international uh, organizations meeting, they accept the uh, territorial integrity of uh, Republic of Azerbaijan. But uh, during the uh, important dates, during the clashes. They try to uh, not be involved, but indirectly they support the aggressor and even uh, uh, support with uh, military weapons, with money. There are a lot of very strong uh, Armenian lobby in U.S. And uh, if, if to uh, take into account that there, uh, in a couple of days there will be uh, elections in U.S., uh, of course the uh, candidates, they should uh, take into account the power of uh, Armenian lobby in U.S. as well. That's why I think uh, Pompeo, uh, the State Secretary of U.S., uh, made these uh, statements how uh, to uh, to be good, uh, to be seen or very good for Armenian lobby for Armenia. So it's very difficult, a very complicated situation. But uh, we we are the right. Side, we, we we are in our right uh, war because we have uh, uh, for UN Security Council resolutions. We are several OEC uh, statements, Council of uh, Europe statements, and all international law uh, demands the uh, withdrawal of all external uh, troops from Nagorno-Karabakh and uh, other surrounded uh, regions. And I think Azerbaijan finally will liberate all uh, occupied territories right. and restore uh, territorial right. integrity. Ahmed Shahidov, thank you very much for talking to us on A News. We really appreciate your taking out the time. Now, we are going live to the city of Ganja, where this latest Armenian attack took place. Uh,